I get announcements from the attorneys and probation for and on the record. Maria Mancha for the state of Texas. Marion Bell for the defense. We're ready. Marie Martinez for probation. Okay, Mr. Guayar, I do need to swear you win. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth under penalty of perjury, should you make a false statement or lie to the court? You have to unmute. Yes, Your Honor. Thank you, sir. You may put your hand down. Mr. Guayar, I need you to listen to me very closely. Back on the 16th day of May of 2016, 17, 18, 19, 20, 1, 2, 3, over seven years ago, you requested, you asked the court to be placed on community supervision, that's what we know as probation, in lieu of, instead of you going to the Bear County Jail and serving time for the offense that you were charged with. That was an assault, bodily injury, family or household, alleged to have taken place about a year before you were put on probation, May 25th to 2015. The range of punishment for that offense, Mr. Cuellar, can be up to one year at the Bear County Jail. And in addition to that, the court could fine you up to, but no more than $4,000. And you could lose your Second Amendment right to bear arms, have guns, and handle ammunition. You were told that by Judge Chandler on the 16th day of May of 2016. You were also warned that if you were to come back before the court, whether it was six months after you were put on probation or 10 years after you were put on probation, you could face the full range of punishment should the court find after hearing from the state, from you, from probation, from your attorney. If the court finds that you have violated the court's orders and your conditions of probation, then you could face the full range of punishment all over again. And I'll remind you one more time, it can be up to one year at the Bear County Jail, up to a $4,000 fine, and you lose your Second Amendment rights. So, Mr. Cuellar, We've been doing this dance with you for over seven years. Do you understand why you're here today? Yes, Your Honor. Do you understand what could happen at the end of this hearing? Yes. Thank you so much, Mr. Cuellar. Please stand by. Ms. Mancha, as the prosecutor for Bear County and the attorney for the state of Texas, why are we here today? Yes, Your Honor, we are here today because on May 16th of 2016, the defendant in this above case was placed on probation for a period of 12 months um, for an assault causing bodily injury, family violence, under provisions of adult probation and parole laws. And that thereafter, during the term of said probation, the defendant violated the terms and conditions therein, the following particulars. Um, the state is going forward on violation condition number 20 that on or about the 23rd day of September of 2016 in Bear County, Texas, the defendant Gustavo Cuellar did then and there fail to comply with the rules, regulations, or instructions of Bear County Community Supervision and Corrections Department Substance Abuse Treatment Facility and that the defendant failed to comply with the program intake instructions in violation of condition number 20. Um, there was a supplemental report as well, Your Honor, and in that one, the state is going forward on viola violation of condition number 21, which is on or about the first day of May of 2017 in Bear County, Texas. The defendant, Gustavo Cuellar, did then and there fail to attend and provide documentation of attendance to Alcohol Anonymous, Narcotics Anonymous meetings two times per week for a period of three months in violation of condition number 21. And anything, there are, sorry, anything else? That's okay. Anything else, Ms. Mancha? No, Your Honor. Okay. Okay, Mr. Cuellar, I'm going to ask you very uh, direct questions, and it's going to pertain to those two alleged violations. The responses that you can choose from are either true or not true. 
And if you have any explanation, your attorney, Mr. Vail, will either give the court an explanation or will call you as a witness for an explanation. Okay, so my first question to you, Mr. Cuellar, the state is alleging that you violated condition number 20 on or around about the 23rd day of September of 2016 because you failed to follow intake directives and court orders. Is that true or not true? Yes, it's true. Okay. And then the second allegation, Mr. Cuellar, that the state is making is that you violated condition number 21 and that you did that um, by, on, or about the first day of May of 2017. And by that day, you had failed to comply with the court order to attend sober support meetings two times a week for three months. And that included specifically under this order signed by Judge Chandler, AA meetings and NA meetings. And the state is alleging you didn't do that. Is that true or not true? It's true. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Guayar. Please stand by. Ms. Mancha, as the prosecutor for Bear County and the attorney for the state of Texas. What is the state seeking today? Yes, Your Honor, the state is seeking revocation in agreement with probation. The case has expired in May, uh, the 5th of May of 2017. Okay. And I'm now going to go to Officer Martinez, and then I'll hear from Mr. Vail. Officer Martinez, can you give your recommendation to the court and then give me a brief summary of Mr. Cuellar's overall compliance. I'm really interested if he ever did um, do anything with his sobriety. Go ahead, Officer Martinez. Yes, Your Honor, before we start, can you tell me, remind me what he pled true to? Was it 20 or 21? Both. 20 and 21, anything yes. else? Yes, that's it. Okay. Your Honor, um, this case, as the state stated, did expire in May of 2017. In September of 2016, Mr. G Mr. Cuellar admitted that he had a problem with meth. He talked to his officer and Judge Chandler ordered him to complete SADF. He told his probation officer he was ready to go. He was ready to get the help. The judge let him stay out on bond while he was pending his medical evaluation. He did not report for his medical evalu evaluation and we did not see him after that. We sent the field unit to his home. His sister stated he was not there. His niece later stated he was at work. And then someone else at the home stated he was with his girlfriend and not at that address. So we tried to contact him. We tried to get him into compliance and get him some treatment. But now, uh, seven years later, it's we have no jurisdiction in the case. So we can only recommend revocation at this time. Thank you, Officer Martinez. Mr. Vail, the court will hear from you now. Let me know if you want to call any witnesses. No, Judge. I mean, I think the probation officer's uh, rendition is accurate. Uh, my client uh, had a drug problem. Uh, and uh, he admitted to that fact, uh, and because of the impact of the drugs, uh, he had poor decision-making and being able to comply with the program, uh, at least the course of treatment that was being recommended by the court. And, of course, at this point, um, it is very difficult to do much with him. Uh, you know, he has, based on my interactions with him, indicated that he has resolved those drug issues. He's not picked up any new offenses, uh, you know, since this case has been pending. He uh, ran into some health issues, Your Honor. Um, basically, he is, uh, um, they're, they're working with him on a cancer diagnosis. Uh, he was receiving treatment that wasn't uh, being very productive. And so that was part of the reason why, um, you know, he's remained drug free because he's had these issues. But there's no excuses that can be given to the court other than the fact that at the time he was, uh, you know, under the influence of methamphetamines, he was having uh, impaired judgment because of that. Um, and, uh, that's why it's accepting responsibility today with this case judge. We, you know, only expect the court to grant the state's motion. We would just ask that the court take into consideration the fact that, uh, he has not, uh, gotten into any more trouble and he has, uh, a health condition that is potentially deteriorating, that he's going to require more invasive treatment than the medication they're giving him right now. Thank you, Mr. Bale. 
I don't know if you know this, Mr. Cuellar, but your attorney cannot be a witness in your case. He made argument based on what you shared with him. You have not presented the court with any proof that you're sober, with any proof that you have cancer, with any proof of anything. Here's what I know seeing you today. You can run, but you cannot hide, Mr. Cuellar. And I don't know what you were thinking for the last seven years, thinking you could just skate by and no one was going to hold you accountable for what you did seven years ago. It all comes back, Mr. Cuellar, all of it. And if you're truly sober, I hope you're working a program because it'll help you wrap your head around the fact that you have to atone and make amends in your sobriety to stay sober. How do I know that? Because I have a spouse that works a program and has been sober over 21 years. That's how I know that, Mr. Cuellar. Today is your day of reckoning. You were given a second chance by Judge Chandler on the 16th day of May of 2016, and you just blew it off. You thought you could just walk away, not only disrespect that judge, disrespect the court, disrespect the process, disrespect any and all work done on your behalf by any attorney, and you totally disrespected the complaining witness in this case, as well as the people of Bear County. Today, Mr. Cuellar, the court is accepting your true pleas for violations of condition number 20 and 21. The court is granting the state's motion to revoke your community supervision and adjudicates you guilty of the offense of assault bodily injury to a family or household member alleged to have taken place on the 25th day of May of 2015 in case number 503772. Officer Martinez, how many days does Mr. Cuellar have at the Bear County Jail? 34. Total. 34. All right. We're going to waive your fee, your fine altogether. It'll be a zero fine, Mr. Cuellar. And waiving your court costs. The court is sentencing you to 365 days at the Bear County Jail, issuing the affirmative finding of family violence. You will get credit for the time served. That's 34. So that leaves you about 331 days left to serve. Divide that by two, Mr. Cuellar. And if the sheriff so chooses, he may give you two for one credit. If you're able to provide folks over at the jail documentation of your medical condition, uh, they may take that into consideration and give you some type of um, humane type of release. I'm not sure. I don't have any evidence of what your uh, attorney argued. And I have a very high opinion of your attorney, and I know he does good work, and he represents his clients extremely well. But there is no evidence in the record. So, Mr. Cuellar, uh, the affirmative finding of family violence means the following. You cannot purchase, possess, own, or use a firearm, a gun, and ammunition. You cannot live anywhere upon your release from custody. You cannot live anywhere, stay anywhere, or visit any location where firearms, guns, or ammunition will be found. Upon your release from custody, Mr. Cuellar, you cannot be a driver or a passenger in any motor vehicle in which firearms, guns, or ammunition will be found. And Mr. Cuellar, we are not restricting your right to hunt, but we are restricting how you hunt. You cannot use a firearm, gun, or ammunition to hunt with. Would anyone else, that is the court order, would anyone else like to add anything to the record? Hearing none. Your Honor. Okay. Ms. Mancha, you're excused. Mr. Vail, uh, yes, you're excused, like sir. I appreciate it, Your Honor. And um, Officer Martinez, you're excused. I'm going to go fill out his paperwork and get ready for the next proceeding. Everyone have a good day. Thanks, Judge.